All right. I have in an explanation on part two, I had left something out. 17 years old, getting back to the elders. I have to, my uncle who considers himself successful and whatnot, he decided to share with me how to make it in life. Give an example, you know, again, on our dysfunction is it, bigger than him. This thought that he has is birthed out of the fear of white folks and the worship of white folks in which his mother taught him. And I, this is not just inclusive to my family. And this is probably what I'm going to do throughout this here 11 minutes. I'm going to give you the history of my family because this is just one of many. I'm going to share with you mental filters which manifest in questions you need to ask to find out and diagnose your family to see how you need to counter the dysfunction. My uncle said, this is how you make it in, in, in this world. The white folks, you got to laugh at the white man. and, and No, no, not laugh at him. You, you, you got to act dumb. You got to laugh at stuff that ain't funny. You got to stroke the white man's ego. And by that time, I've been listening to Farrakhan for, for two years. And I'm used to a man with a pair of balls. And so my eyes like, nigga, are you serious? You teaching me how to be a white man's girlfriend. Are you fucking serious? You better get a girlfriend or a wife. I wasn't born in 57. I was born in 75, bro. I'm not doing that shit. Hell, to this day, I work for myself and live outside this damn system. Cause I'm not gonna. I can't deal with the white psychosis. Hell, they have taken everything from me that matters. So I have no fear. I'm gonna get in your ass for old and new, and for my ancestors too, if you give me a chance. You know, and it's good that I'm good physically and I'm good intellectually. I could be a professor. I could be a goddamn football player. You understand? So, again, back to the respect factor. Right? To me, what that says is nurture. we're going to nurture white supremacy just to make sure the next generation has to deal with it. And you're going to tell me you love your damn children. Nigga, you done lost your goddamn mind if you practice that shit in the same breath. You love material things. You a nigga that have subscribed to individuality, which is a synonym for apathy. You don't give a damn about nothing but yourself. Just like this white man, because he have duplicated himself in you, following him. We're like dogs being led by cats, trying to be dogs, trying to be cats. Running into a tree, because we can't run up a tree, because we ain't got the apparatus to do so. Wishing we was cats. And you, your dog ass ain't gonna out cat the cat, bro. So let's follow the laws of dogs. Just an analogy, okay. There's so many lies. The white man don't even have a scripted language. You look up Latin. It's gonna say a Punic language. Carthage. Hannibal. North Africa. No scripted language. Casey Gray, Percy Gray's book, 16 Crucified Saviors. Jesus ain't the first one. Copy written but still bidden. This plagiarized bastard, man. Yo, Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Laws of Mayotte, 42 Confessions. Stolen Legacy. White folks had to build themselves up because they ain't got no culture, bro. You need to look at hidden colors. I was looking at hidden, I maybe mean, part five today or yesterday. Most humble Elijah Muhammad said the white man don't want you to live in his, around him because if you knew him, you wouldn't let such follow him. I've been studying him and his systems for 30 years. Ain't no way in the hell. That's why women do not understand. It's hard for me to relate now because you're not going to bring that around me. I know what it's going to do for us. Not one goddamn thing. And we got plenty of history to prove it.
So I just wouldn't understand an argument. I hope somebody give me a good argument in this. Give me a chance to exercise my mind. Please challenge me. All right? But let me get into my family history. We have to ask ourselves the right questions to understand what our problem is. I don't know much about my paternal side. My father never, I never met anyone beside my father with that last name. But my mother's side, I know well. My mother's grandfather came off of a plantation. A plantation is not a place you're going to come off of with a high quality, with a, with a quality love for black folks. Her grandfather had his food cooked in different pots. He ate all different plates because in his mind, the only thing he knew was life on a plantation. So he was a slave master of his house. He had five girls, including my grandmother and a son. But that man slept on 17 children. So my grandmother had to bury 17 of her little brothers and sisters that may have made it up to 11 months old. And I just found that out this year. So, if you don't understand the sickness that's going to be birthed in our family, we don't, we, we got to, we, we don't, we got to, you know, when I talk to my aunts and uncles individually, you know what they say? We weren't her children, as far as my grandmother. We was her slaves. Now, my grand, my, my, my great-grandfather, I ain't number no legends with that, man. They out of home in Louisiana and about three parishes around it. They, they dominated. But they say his mama pu 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 pushed out 21, 22 boys. That was a goddamn platoon. And they didn't, they, you know, living under the har harshness of this, this, on the white folks, they, they got, there's some, there's some legendary goddamn stories about these people. They didn't take no shit. Grand Great grandpa was like 6'6", six, six, 280. He had some nice things. They, my mother my, my decided he had a big old nice house. And every door had guns by it and ammo over the door. Some family went, they, you know, white folks done them bad. They, they done the white folks bad. So they had to go on the run sometimes. They go to his house while they on the run through there. They're not going to stay forever, but they're going to go through there. Sometimes the white folks got to knock on his door and ask him something. Hell, they got to play rock, paper, scissors to knock on his door. They come to his door with their hat in hand from what I hear. Some white folks moved. Yeah, he was in town one time, I heard. He had a nice horse and saddles and shit with the silver and all that, whatever. You know how we got gold appointments and things on cars now. They had the amenities on the car. Well, that was my horses back then. Somebody moved his horse. Said he went to some establishment. White folks. Somebody moved my horse. I'm going to let you know I ain't like that. Hell, that was enough to get your ass lynched. He survived. Plenty of things, man. My... One thing I got in my blood, we ain't got, to, we ain't taking no shit. You know? And I thought I lost everything I, that I could have got. I, I, please. Like the Haitians. You got to realize. It. We only had one. I'm not going to rant. We've only had. So, love is something that we have a problem with. We're good with the family inside the house, but when it comes to people outside the house, uh, how do you relate? How, 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 how do we care? You know, we're very family oriented, but not to the point where we can have family reunions. You know, husband, wife, children, great. Cousins, sister, brother, mm, uh, that's what we have problems getting over things and, you know, relating and following up a, a healthy code. That's what we need in place in that area. Okay? But in short, about the Haitians, you know, when they were fighting the French, one brother would go jump inside the cannon to jam it. To, and the brother behind them is going to kill the fucker that's about to light it. They had no fear of death. The first 
republic in the Western Hemisphere that beat the Spanish, they beat the French, and they beat the British. And when they beat the French, the numbers was six, about 6,000 black folks that probably ain't got the, the, the artillery or whatever that the French had. And they came in 33,000 strong, beat that ass, and made them have to sell the Louisiana Purchase. Know your history, know who you're from, and know what your potential is. I've been working since I was six years old. I got a high mechanical aptitude, but I was an accounting major. But I can build with my hands. I can do everything. Ever since I was a teenager, there was no more of that Western shit. My mama, by herself, you best believe she was that following the white man because that was the only man that was in the house. And I've probably been very limited without the nation of Islam. There's no limitation with me now. I can do anything. Hell, I got down there. Hang on a second. <laughs> but anyway, this is my last one, man. It is 22.43. Just, this is, this, I'm good enough. This is three for the day. I'm good. <laughs>